exalt thee, Lord. We magnify your name. Eternal in the heavens, everlasting Jehovah, the great I am that I am. The light that shines in darkness. And darkness is not able to comprehend it. The God that sits upon the circles of the earth. The great administrator of the universe. The governor among the nations. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We receive further help. We receive further assistance. We receive entrance. We receive on the spot revelation. We receive instructions. We receive light. We receive ease and utterance in the spirit. Father, we ask you to, in mercy, honor your name and give effect to your word and let your name alone be glorified. We pray in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Um, we want to give God thanks and praise uh, for how much he has been gracious unto us. Since the beginning of uh, this conference, um, we give him praise for how much help we have received. He indeed has been present with us. He has akined to the voices of our supplications ahead of the conference. And he has spoken through diverse ministry. And indeed, the theme of the conference, uh, conference you say that um, diverse entrances, but I can he tell you that um, all that we have achieved so far is like uh, still scratching the theme. You want to try that, then you extend this conference by another one week. And you ask all the ministries that have spoken to come and speak again. And you find them coming from some other entrance to show that we cannot exhaust the theme of this conference. Praise the Lord. Um, what we can encourage one another to do uh, with the amount of words that have come is for us to be able to go back and um, to be able to go back and prayerfully go over and over and over this that God has spoken to us in uh, more than half a week now. And um, ask God for capacity to be able to walk in the light of those words. Praise the Lord. Um, I would probably have wanted to add another dose to all that we have been hearing since Thursday night. But that on Thursday, as worship was going on, I sat at one corner there, and the Lord 
opened the eyes of my heart to pry into the heavens of some of the attendees at the meeting. And it caused me to know that there are persons who have come to this conference that have a destiny with this conference and that have decisions that must be made to give them a turnaround for a lifetime. I came with what I titled Overcoming in the evil day, the heritage of Jacob. But when I had that transaction, I knew what the Lord was saying is that I should keep this burden aside, but look at this that must not leave this conference without taking certain practical and radical decisions. At some point, I thought I could combine the two. And I continued to transact with the Spirit of the Lord. And at some point, I knew I needed to enter into rest over the matter. And so, I am going to look at just a very few scriptures. Um, to help the persons for whom I believe this ministration is meant to get steered in their heart so they can make a maximum gain from this conference. Praise the Lord. By the time we will have been done with that, I want to believe that the Lord is also permitting us to pray on some specific needs before we close. And I will see how we can tie in all of that um, in the time available. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to quickly come to Genesis chapter, if possible, if you can help me from the media end to project, Genesis chapter 25. If a few verses from Genesis chapter 25, and I would desire for us to please or follow me very keenly so that whoever some of the things belong to, you will not miss it. You will not miss that which is meant for you. Um, we could not have come here for four or five days and there will be no one getting blessed. God does not visit without leaving a deposit of blessing behind. So that you have been part of this conference and that God has visited shows that God must leave an impact in your life, deposit something in your life, that you can remember positively for a lifetime. Praise the Lord. Genesis 25 from verse um, 21. Now, I call this the heritage of Jacob, but I want you to, for those of us who may be jotting something down, I want you to put your name 
to replace Jacob on your nose and say the heritage of your name. I'm Sam, the heritage of Sam. So we are looking at the heritage of Jacob. We are looking at the heritage of your very person. Praise the Lord. Genesis 25, verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Why? Because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah's wife conceived. Next verse. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so. Why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Next verse. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy boil. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Next verse. And when our days to be delivered we are fulfilled, behold, there were twins in our womb. 25. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name eh? Esau. And then verse 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bear them. Back in verse 21. And then we'll look at. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. I want us to take note of the fact that uh, Isaac's wife was a uh, barren. That's where the trouble started from. Barrenness was already a number one contention against that heritage called the heritage of Jacob to show that the possibility existed that Jacob may never have been born. Because barrenness means that there was no chance of his being born Except the barrenness is broken. I want some of us here seated tonight to know that some of us may not know why we behave the way we behave. We may not know why we act the way we act. We may not know sometimes some of us younger generation, you look at the way you behave and you think that you are a tough guy. But the issue is there are several who have started con contention from the point of a conception. Batu already had started before you are ever conceived. And if you have started your contention before conception, the one who steered that contention wants to follow you for as far as he can. Except intervention comes your way. What on earth could have caused this woman to be barren. So, but the account says that she was entreated for and she conceived. When she was going to conceive, Isaac was entreating the Lord for his wife for a child. And this child of necessity 
must be the one to receive the transfer of blessing coming from Abraham through Isaac and to send it to the next generation. The first contention was about barrenness. The second contention was the fact that instead of one child, you want to ask a question. Where comes the second child? You want to ask a question. Medical doctors are here to have identical twins means that one egg was fertilized and got split into two. To have unidentical uh, twins means two independent eggs got fertilized. Now, in Romans chapter 9, maybe you can give me that. Romans chapter 9 from verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works, but of him that calleth. Next verse. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Next verse. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now, before conception, Jacob was already the here apparent. He was the one to collect the blessing. How come that prophecy said, God? Chose Jacob. That he loved Jacob means that that was the one that was the egg that was meant to be fertilized. Of course, we know that Jacob and Esau were not identical twins. That means as the egg of Jacob was to receive the seed, this one other, this other one just rolled in. It's a contention. Right from that level. And for some of us seated here this night, it's like that. The enemy wanted to abort the prospects in your life right from before your conception. And that's why parents thank God for the ministry coming from our brethren, over the children. There are a lot of contentions. You see a child from the house of kingdom believers that are every, that is everything but the witness or the testimony of the home where it's coming out from. And we look at it and take it as you will take it for granted. Not knowing that even before conception, the enemy has desired to ensure that if conception will take place, then abort that conception. Or else cause confusion. So Jacob had started contention right from the womb. To the extent that the mother had to go to the Lord. Why this trouble? Why this contention? And the Lord had to answer her. So for some of you, especially in the younger generation, some of your stories will fit into what we are discussing tonight you will find that many times you cannot understand what is happening to you. Many times you have a struggle. 
you really, really, really love to serve God, you want to follow the way of your parents, you want to follow the way of righteousness, but the power to do it is not with you. It's a contention beyond you. And if you have come to this conference, it is not an accident. God wants to resolve for you the contention tonight. If you can give me um, um, is that Romans? No, yeah, Romans 7. Romans 7, 24. Possibly in NLT or NIV. Romans 7, 24. I want you to follow me keenly. Romans 7, 24, NLT. Oh, this KJV, is it? Do you have NLT or you want me to search for it myself? Or NIV? Is this NLT? This NLT? Oh, thank you. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin? Next verse. Thank God. The answer is where? In Jesus Christ our Lord. So, you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. That's the story of several. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Next verse. 26. No. Is it ending 25? Okay, so yeah, it's in verse 1, chapter 8, that uh, the answer was, uh, so you find the struggle that is going on. As I sat there that night, I saw some of you in this conference, particularly of the younger generation, who are struggling, but you are not old enough. But Tonight, the key to your freedom lies in your taking a practical decision. I call it a decision. That decision will get you to the front because certain prayers are supposed to be uttered over your heavens to resolve the conflicts and the contentions over your life. Back in uh, Genesis 25, number King James Version, verse 22, verse 22, verse 23, Verse 24. And then verse 25. Okay, verse 26. Okay. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. His name was called Jacob. Jacob means il, H W E L, il kacha. The alternative one we've been used to is the supplanter. Because he caught the ill of the brother. The issue is there is a trouble, there is a contention. There is a contention that was so strong as to abort the prospect that Jacob ever had. On account of Esau. And you wonder, there are some mysteries that are beyond 
human analysis. This conception had nothing to do with Esau at all. What we stir up another egg at that instance was already a sign that there was a conspiracy. It was a conspiracy. Many times, you parents do not understand that there are forces beyond their children when they behave this way or behave that way. As I speak tonight, there are people seated here who are using the same ICT power in the negative manner. Who are working online negatively. Who instead of tapping into the positivity tied to ICT, they are engaging in the negativity. And if you know that you are fitting into this story, if I receive power for you, I didn't want to make the other utterance. For you to come out very shortly because basically what we are going to do tonight as we go through these scriptures is to expose persons to interventions that are available here. We cannot go back with persons going back the way they came in. You don't come to the environment where God has visited. Come in with yokes and go out with yokes. So, it is very important that if you know that you have been struggling with situations beyond your capacity, if you also know that you have been transacting online fraudulently, if you know that you have been participating in Yahuwah you affair. If you know because the spirit of the Lord made it clear, you must not leave this conference but be prayed for so that your yokes and bondages can be broken. Because it's beyond your power, you cannot handle it. You cannot handle it. That's the story of Jacob. It's a conspiracy beyond himself. At the instance of conception, a and egg from nowhere just rolled in. And that egg ensured that it was the one that came out first. But in spite of the conspiracy of hell, Jacob still got that which belonged to him. Your prospect will not elude you if you obey the instruction tonight. So what I want us to do briefly is that if you fit into this story, I want you to please just come forward. We will pray for you. If you are struggling with certain habits that are overwhelming for you, if you are struggling with certain situations, you find that each time the force comes, it comes over you and overpowers you. Right now, I want you to please come out. We will break certain things without having to even lay hands on you.